Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Nancy Serrano. I'm the Assistant Graduate Director for Admissions for the FLEX MSBA. Um, I'm here with Keith Peterson, the Executive Program Director for the MS in Business Analytics. He's here to talk to us tonight um, about our building business analytics skills with project-based learning. Keith? Thank you, Nancy. Hello, everyone. And um, so we've got an hour to spend together. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit and share with you some information. I'll share my screen in a second, but let's also use the chat um, and ask any questions. We'll definitely leave a lot of time at, at the end of this um, for questions and answers to learn more about the program. So with that, um, well, just a little bit about me. So I'm the executive director of the MSBA full-time and flex at Rady. Um, so my role is overseeing the overall administration of the program, which encompasses admissions, uh, student affairs, career uh, planning, which is obviously very important, as well as the other types of activities that we, uh, we engage in. So we have a speaker series. We host events throughout the course of your program with us. Um, and those are all things we're excited to talk about and uh, help you learn more about as you're making decisions about um, UCSD and, and radius as, as a potential future um, home for you. And uh, one thing I think it's important to us, I'll just say is that we do believe in continuous lifelong learning. So we begin with the program. Um, the program is uh, a lot of work um, and it's a great resource. I think all of our students come out with a lot after that, but we do then work hard to engage alumni in a series of activities. So we see it as an opportunity for you to keep learning. So for example, uh, alumni are able to audit for courses that they haven't taken while they're here um, after they leave the program. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen. And what we're going to talk to, about today is uh, project-based learning and, and how that plays a role in your experience at Rady. All right. And Nancy, I'll just check thumbs up. Everybody can see my screen? Okay. Okay, uh, so capstone projects. One of the ways that we engage in experiential learning is through projects and the capstone project program is part of that. Now capstone projects are typically what you'll do in your final quarter within the program. And capstone projects um, culminate in a way for you to then apply the skills, the new knowledge and learning you've, you've obtained in the course of the program in a real life situation. So what I'd like to do is walk you through what that uh, actually looks like um, in the course of the program. And capstone projects are, since this is a master of science program, it's a core required course as uh, part of the overall experience within the project, but and within the program, but it's one that most students find one of the most enriching parts of uh, being in the Rady MSBA program. So as you know, Rady is all about preparing future business analysts uh, in data sciences and across all of the analytical areas where there are jobs where people are collecting, analyzing, using data to improve their organizations. Um, a lot of our focus here is on a very practical application because we're a business um, analytics focused program. And we focus not only on data and methods, but on the emerging technologies that you will be leveraging in the field. Uh, like a lot of areas of engineering, perhaps even more so data sciences, business analytics is changing every year. It's a field where there's tons of innovation constantly happening in terms of the availability of data, in terms of the tools that we can apply. And we make it a point within our program to expose you to those types of tools and help you understand uh, not only how to use them, but how they are used in the context of an organization. And the capstone projects themselves are, it's uh, really an opportunity to work with an outside company um, to apply your skills and address a real world business problem. And as uh, many of you may know that, that are working, um, a lot of times we, we, have a, we can learn a lot of new tools. It's when we really apply them with some uh, consequence around them. That's when we really get the most learning out of that experience. So with us, these outside projects are done with companies that have a real world business problem and you work on that problem as a team um, throughout the course of a full quarter. So it's a 10 to 12 week experience as part of the, the Rady program. And what is a capstone? It's effectively a team-based project. Um, it's a real project sourced from a real company. So we have relationships with 
a full range of companies across industries um, and have a range of different types of business problems. And what we work with them on is identifying a specific business challenge that can be addressed with data and analytics. So these projects um, uh, come from a point of a real pain point for a company. They've got data that they can use to address that problem and that will be your job. And at the end of that process, there are real deliverables. And those deliverables can range from a presentation to a company, uh, perhaps to senior management, the functional leaders within the organization. It might be code and algorithms that were developed uh, on behalf of the company. Um, and it also might be an app. So uh, it's not uncommon at all for our student teams to develop something like a shiny app or a set of dashboards that the company then would implement in their business as part of the overall process. So it really is high value for, for all parties involved. Uh, how do capstone projects work? As I said, they're team-based. Typically teams will range in size from five to six and that team will uh, elect a leader um, that will um, uh, work with us and the faculty on some of the administrative tasks, uh, setting up and scheduling contacts with their companies. That leader might be chosen and selected for the entire project. A team might also decide to rotate leaders um, uh, over the course of the project. It gives everybody an experience not only in doing analytics, but participating in the project management and the overall management of these projects. Overall, the timeline is about 12 weeks from beginning to end when you begin working with a company, understand their needs, um, engage in your project, and deliver those results. What's kind of unique about our approach is we are sourcing projects that have three specific components. The first is a descriptive analytical element or we call it exploratory data analysis. And that's really getting in and understanding core data that the company is providing, making sure that data is correct and accurate and complete, but then also analyzing it. So you get a sense of what the dynamics are within the company based on data. The second element is a predictive or segmentation-based analysis. This is really where you're going to be applying more of the skills that you've learned in the program, leveraging uh, algorithms, leveraging machine learning, statistical optimization techniques, all those elements that would be important to addressing that specific business question. And then the last and important phase is a prescriptive uh, analytical component. What that really means is we spend time and after you've done the analysis, just doing the analysis is not the only part of the job. It's really what business value, what commercial value can be derived from it through a company. So your presentation will encompass not only showing them that you understand the data, you've done analysis to help them solve the business problem, but last of all, to think through a framework of how they can leverage that information in their business. And most all companies find that to be a tremendous part of the value of engaging with UCSD and Rady on these projects. And it's a great way just to think about your own critical thinking skills and understanding the value of data analytics. All the programs have a faculty advisor associated with them to help them through the project. Um, the, uh, we also have business communications coaches. So an important part of these projects is the technical element. And then there's the, what we might call soft skills, but how you work and engage with your uh, project sponsor and how you present your information, how you prepare deliverables. Our business communications coaches are specifically focused on that element of the overall process. And then we also have alumni that come back and work with us and they make themselves available, say through office hours, to work with your teams on an as needed basis. Overall, you're surrounded by a very strong team of resources that will help you with these projects. And so how does overall this process work? Um, within the context of the, of the program. Um, do you get assigned just uh, any project, uh, whether or not you're interested in it? No. What we do is we um, source a number of different projects and areas that our students in the prior cohorts have said are of great interest to them. There's a lot of continuity around there. We allow students to rank the projects they're interested in and then assign them to a team. And in almost all cases, uh, students get assigned to a team where there is a general level of interest. Now, we always do say the most important part of Capstone is not the company that you work with. It's what you do with the opportunity in front of you to practice and master your skills as part of this process. You're gonna execute the project as a team. And that means we have um, uh, an approach where we're ensuring that each person on the team is contributing specifically to the project. Um, Overall activities include once the project kicks off, there is a kickoff and discovery session um, with your company. 
Following that, a what's called a solution path document is prepared and submitted for review. And that's your overall plan, your roadmap for what that project's gonna look like. Um, after that, we do both uh, the business coaching during the course of the, uh, uh, the 10 weeks. And the two graded assignments are a midterm presentation and a file, final presentation and oral exam. Uh, and those are important as part of learning, um, but probably the most important thing uh, that we think about is the sponsor presentations, how you're delivering your learning and your results back to those companies. Um, that's great for a couple of reasons. One, it demonstrates what you've learned, gives you a chance to practice those skills. A lot of you will have already been doing that in your, your current work and your current jobs. This can be a little bit different when we're working with actual data. And one of the important things is learning how to tell stories with data that will compel management to want to take action and change their business based on the insights that you've generated. What does it look like in terms of how we execute these? So the timeline is about a 12 week uh, time frame. It begins at the beginning of either fall or spring quarters, depending on when you're um, joining us. Um, it overall starts with a business analytics consulting, a required business analytics consulting course, which is a two unit course to prepare you for the capstone experience, but also to give you exposure to what it's like to actually a business to be a business analytics consultant or somebody inside of a company who's doing business analytics and wants to have an impact on their organization. So this course is all about preparing you to define, execute and deliver a project. You can see the elements, other elements I've talked about, which is the coaching sessions, the midterm, the final presentations. Sponsor presentations happen in the latter part of the quarter. Some of those are on site, some of them are done by Zoom. Kind of depends on you know where the world is at in terms of pandemics, also where they, um, where that sponsor is um, located. We have uh, sponsors across the U.S. as well as some that are international. So you have a, a chance to potentially work on a, on a project for a company in Europe or Mexico. As you see in the bottom of the timeline, generally the three elements I talked about, the descriptive component, predictive component, prescriptive components are sequential. So we start out with having you work with the data, understand it, then move into actually analyzing that data. And then a significant portion, last um, probably three full weeks of this effort is gonna be put into how you're going to prepare your results and how you're gonna think about what your recommendations are to a company based on the value and the modeling that you've delivered. So what types of companies would you have the chance to participate with? We do recruit a range of different companies from small to large um, and across an array of different industries. You can see some of the samples here. We work in the technology space and healthcare and media. Um, and what we're trying to do is uh, impart to people that, you know, a lot of different companies out there, but most all companies are driven by data these days. All of them have a digital transformation um, that they've gone through over the course of the past decade or they're going through now. And what digital transformation means is your company is acting on data that's running through your business. And it's our job to help that company improve by analyzing that information. So every company you see up here collects and analyzes data and would like to have uh, teams like ours execute a project on these data. I can tell you that from the standpoint of what they're looking for, the value they receive is, is number one is taking a business challenge and getting fresh thinking on that project. Um, a lot of times they think uh, students like yourselves are gonna be receiving the latest training and preparation. And you're gonna come at these projects maybe from a different way that they haven't thought about. Very important. And obviously some of the other areas of, of value are talent exposure and talent development. So. For those of you that may be looking to uh, pursue a job at the end of these processes, this is a great way to meet a number of companies that place a high value on business analysts. And I'll talk a little bit last of all, just in terms of sample projects, so you get a sense of the types of things that you might work on. Um, you can just kind of read through these here, but you think about you know, four areas would be customer relationship, management, uh, and marketing areas for lots of companies, lots of data that's collected about their customers. They might want to know things about what is the revenue potential or profit potential for a customer, a group of customers, which of our customers might be at risk of going to a competitor. And overall, if we think about our customers, how much are, are they going to be worth to us over the course of our relationship with them? Customer lifetime value. 
The other area is on operations. So companies, um, many companies are focused on things like service level failures, understanding within our business, where's the risk that we need to be focused on, that we need to understand, or from an operational standpoint, how might we think about labor and staffing and work scheduling? These are great projects for business analysts and for working with data. And the last, and specifically an area that obviously the past uh, year or so has been pretty high profile for everybody is within the supply chain. So understanding where there might be risk in your supply chain, understanding what sustainability issues there may be in a supply chain, perhaps how to optimize your supply chain to address emissions, total emissions that are associated with your business. These are things that are top of mind for most major companies, particularly international companies um, this day and age. So a couple examples just to finish up our talk and then we'll kind of open it up for any sort of questions and discussion. A little bit more detail. So within the marketing space, a common type of project might be determining the optimal media mix for consumer products um, that are in targeted campaigns. So as many of you in the marketing space might know, one of the key questions of our age is marketing attribution. You know, we're spending money on, you know, we traditionally spent on print and maybe on television and radio. And of course, now that's completely flipped where we're spending a lot of our time and effort online and different channels. We're delivering products then to directly to your home or through retail channels. All of that creates a very complex ecosystem for marketing. And so a lot of companies are interested in leveraging their data to figure out what's the best way to allocate our marketing dollars to get the most exposure and the most effective exposure to customers. Moving over, we talked a little bit about uh, service level failures or service failures within the supply chain. So supply chain risk obviously is top of mind for every company now. You know, we, we kind of have done that flip from supply chain focus being just-in-time delivery of products, the most efficient supply chains that, you know, that we can provide to just-in-case supply chains, which is a supply chain that can survive issues like the pandemic, where do we have enough um, product stock? We have the mechanisms in place to deliver those products to make sure we continue with servicing our customers through a major event like a pandemic or many others it could be. So companies are thinking about how to leverage the data, not only their internal data, but data from their partners, their distribution partners, their retail partners, bringing that together and analyzing that, to help them understand where the risk is and then what the optimal approaches would be to offset that risk. Um, as we re start recovering from major events like the pandemics, a lot of companies have fundamentally changed how they're approaching business. And a lot of them are now having a really hard time understanding exactly when their business is gonna to return to normal or will there be a new normal? So for example, within the entertainment industry is how quickly are we going to get patrons back? How can we forecast what's gonna happen? How quickly um, uh, attendance is gonna rise on theme parks? And that impacts everything from labor and scheduling to marketing, um, to truly optimizing your business around getting people back in the parks and regrowing your business. And then maybe moving over to thinking about science and technology. Um, so optimizing inventory and replenishment decisions. This is a major focus for most companies that deliver products, which is understanding how to optimize that balance between the demand for your business and your products and your supply and how you balance those out so that you're most efficiently meeting the needs of your customers. All these are projects that have been taken on by students. Um, typically they're broken up into each as we talked about the phase of getting some data, let's say understanding overall what product movement information looks like for inventory management, moving into predictive analytics or optimization, which might be based on the products, our lead times and our replenishment policies, what is the right amount of product to order to make sure that we're fulfilling on our needs? Data-driven questions. And then last of all, thinking maybe more about big data. So uh, business analysts today work some work with what we call not small data, but data that's relevant to a business. You might have several thousand customers and a lot of data on those customers that you can analyze to understand churn. In the financial services space, space, fundamentally different, very, very large data, what we traditionally call big data. And that's an area we focus our coursework and, now, and our analytical projects on is helping people understand how to work with that large data, because sometimes that's where some of the most interesting types of analysis can come, particularly as we start delving into AI, machine learning, and deep learning types of analytics. 
but we need a lot of data to feed those types of models. And by working with companies in the financial services space, whether it be banks or insurance companies, we get access to that types of data, let you have a chance to exercise um, your new skills, working with very large data and applying different types of analysis to that process. So that's a, a real quick overview um, from the standpoint of our presentation. What I wanna do now is to kind of just stop uh, sharing my screen and then turn it over and uh, open it up to any sort of questions, comments, or discussions as part of our, uh, as part of our conversation here today. So I'll just open up if anybody has any questions, maybe put it in the chat, Nancy, if you could help monitor that, or if you want to come off mute, if we can do that and ask a question, happy to do that as well. Hi, uh, my name is Jerry. Uh, I, well, my actual name is Ted Ardolo, but I go by Jerry. Um, I, I'm currently kind of looking into the MBA slash MSBA program at UC San Diego. Um, what advice or what kind of questions do you think uh, I should be asking myself if I'm uh, kind of in between both programs? Uh, I currently work for Amazon as a financial analyst, and I definitely do like the emphasis on big data and creating dashboards, working with SQL, working with um, some, some computer programming as well. Uh, but I'm kind of stuck in between deciding which route to take and uh, is kind of asking for advice as to maybe what kind of questions I should be asking. Mm. Uh, Jerry, that's a great question. Um, and within the program, you, you know, you have the option, you, you have some flexibility there. So you can take electives as an MBA in the, in the business analytics area and vice versa. So I think it kind of falls around your career ideas, your career goals. Um, what direction that you're going. So uh, an MBA provides a broad-based learning experience that prepare you for pretty much any um, functional area of a business. And the business analytics side of it can also do that, but it's going to come at it from the standpoint of how you can be, um, I consider it a data scientist, how you can be someone who works with data to inform parts of the business. And I see two tracks that people pursue. One is uh, the kind of the pure analysts, people that really want to work with data. They might be doing things like building data pipelines for companies, um, doing what's called machine learning operations, which is building and managing the models that a company is using. And their customer typically might be product management, might be marketing or the supply chain side, or, or obviously finance. And that's that, that relationship that happens there. So I, I think it may as you think about where your passion is in terms of the things you would you want to pursue, you know, if you're in finance now and you want to progress in that area, then um, an MBA with a strong focus on electives in the business analytics area could be a great path. If you're thinking you want to expand and move into, let's say, the product management, there's marketing, there's operations. Almost all, and certainly Amazon, almost all those areas have strong data analytic components. So you could think about that as being uh, from being a person who's analyzing data on behalf of the, of the business. Long-term in terms of moving into management and senior management, um, if you'd asked me five or seven years ago, I would have said an MBA is the best way to do this and get some business analytics experience. I think that's not true anymore. I think you can take both paths. If you want to move into management up to any level of the organization, you can come at it from, from both sides. But I do think that in the future, most companies are going through digital transformation and they're building platforms um, that drive a lot of data that they wanna work with. And so strong analytical skills will be key um, in terms of career growth. So um, specific types of questions, Jerry's, I, I think, Jerry, I, I think it really, yeah, relates to kind of where you see you want your next steps to be and how strongly you wanna be focused on the the data and data analytics side of it. It's definitely one of the most creative areas in, you know, in business today. Thanks for the question. And I'm happy too, if anybody else on the, on the call has any other comments or, or suggestions, jump in as well, it's great. Add in Gerardo also, um, there is quite of opportunity in terms of <clears throat> taking electives. 
So just like Keith had mentioned, you can take electives, you know, up to 12 units. I think we might be modifying that slightly to take a little bit more um, in other areas so that you can get those little areas that you might be interested in. Um, but yeah, we can definitely set up an advising session as well and go through a little bit of the class program and look at some of the courses just to see that they're in line in what you want to do as well. It's an interesting activity too. One thing I do is go on to LinkedIn and look up um, graduates from, from our MSBA programs and to see where they're landing. Um, I think you'll see a pretty good career progression. And I think you'll see that they're landing, you know, not only jobs in the traditional functional areas, but there are a lot of new types of jobs that are emerging in the new economy that they're better suited to take on. So to what traditionally might be a product management function is now in the realm of product design. And product design, if you're in software or if you have products that are in a marketplace, are data driven. There's a lot of testing and experimentation, obviously, that, that go on to define these products. And that's where a lot of business analytic skills become critical. Some of the basic questions that, that people often ask is, do I get to pick my project, what I work on? Um, we say, you know, this is kind of a real world experience here. And so we ask you to, to rank the projects in terms of the ones that are available in the quarter that you're here in terms of your level of interest. And we try our best to match you to one. So typically we'll, we'll have you rank them from kind of top to least interest. And then I can say that uh, um, almost everyone gets something within kind of their top five. But again, it's a chance to, I think you'll work on something that you have a lot of interest in, interest in, but the most important thing is taking the skills you learn and then applying them in, you know, with a real company. Um, some of the, and I'll ask myself another question, uh, you may think of some others, what are we doing that's new within the program? As I mentioned, emerging technologies is a pretty critical area for us because we see the, the space moving so quickly. So you're going to start the program um, with a focus on if you have strong SQL skills, great. Um, if not, we're going to develop those. You don't have to have any, um, but it's a foundational element, but then we'll be pretty quickly moving into um, working with machine learning um, based tools and algorithms um, as both a consumer, as both the user and a consumer of those types of, of tools. And then we'll expose you to leveraging Python and R. Um, we have access to standard array of tools, as well as some commercial types of tools. That's an important thing, um, I believe, for people in the space is not to be necessarily an expert in one single tool, unless you're with a company for a long period of time and that's what they use. It's understanding the underpinnings of all these tools, what's important in terms of the mathematics, statistics that underpin how people are doing analysis today. So by getting, seeing how you're doing similar projects using a couple of different types of tools, you'll gain that understanding. That's great in terms of, I think, um, job viability and being able to present yourself to multiple companies with an understanding of what's critical to know there and then at that point, you're going to know how to pick up the skills to leverage kind of any new tools that come on the market or that a potential employer would you want would want you to use. Mm, my last question for me would be um, what's kind of one of the hardest parts of of the program, you know, I'm telling you, uh, hopefully you're building some enthusiasm um, for what we're doing here. We think it's um, it's unique in terms of the way that we're approaching it. But when some students ask, what are some of the hard things to do? Um, I find one of the, some of the hard things to do, but some of the most rewarding is figuring out how to tell a good story with your data. Because when you're doing analysis, facts and figures are what gets you a seat at the table to help a company improve its business. But positioning it in a way that people start nodding their heads and get involved with what you're saying and what your ideas are requires a bit of storytelling. So we have core courses in that area, as well as our business communications coaches that will work with you on that. And you'll see how that works over the course of the actual project. But I think that's a fun area. If you're a 
you know, a person maybe like me, it's um, a bit more uh, internally driven and likes to work with a lot of data, that can be something that, that seems a little bit intimidating, but I think it's not. It's one of the most creative elements that, that I think our students engage in, and they typically feel like they've made a, a lot of progress and feel a lot of pride in what they're able to do when you learn how to not just take data and present charts, but also formulate a story around that. Nick, would you say um, students have to work alone, or would you say like it is more of a collaborative program? Oh, overall, a collaborative program. So, you know, all of us know that when we work today within companies, um, we're working within teams. And a lot of the processes, particularly in business analytics now, you know, there's a pipeline that has to be built to do data analytics. We have to go get access to the data, prepare it, which is a lot of work, um, do the analysis and implement it. And say we're implementing algorith algorithmic models like a recommender system you know, within Amazon or any company that's, that's in the e-commerce space. All of those are becoming very specialized now. So it's a great opportunity. There's a lot of opportunities for employment and to focus on the part of, the, of, that ta of those tasks that, that most interest you. So all of those require you working within teams. Um, we're, as a, as a university, we want to know, uh, first of all, that we can help you develop the skills to work within a teams, but also then understand your individual knowledge. So all the courses have, most of the courses have team-based projects as well as individual elements as well. Good question. So we have a couple in the chat. Um, so there, there's a question about what's the learning experience like? How approachable is the faculty, would you say? Mm -hmm. um, are there some areas that they can focus on? Um, clubs, student organizations, mm -hmm. career services? Oh, good question. A lot there. I'll yeah. start out by saying um, UCSD is, is a large UC, preeminent um, as, a, as a school, you know, top engineering school in the country. The Rady School within that, I consider uh, a smaller school, a smaller school in size. And what that means is our program is very much tailored and customized to the learning experience that you tell us that you want. Um, and our faculty place a priority on that. So I think it's kind of a unique culture here. Um, there is relatively small number of students, which means you have access to faculty. Um, my experience teaching as well as with other faculty is that there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction, particularly if you have areas of interest to you that, that align with, with faculty members. So I think I would say, you know, you'll find them approachable. Um, and we create a lot of structure to create the opportunities for interaction. Um, it's been a little bit hard during the past COVID period, but we're, we're kind of refreshing all of those programs now. And as, if you're joining us in the near future, those things will be back in, in place. So students do a lot of their own um, organization. There's a student organization um, for leadership within the program. There's a Rady Data Analytics Club, a supply chain focus club. Um, students are very active in organizing themselves and uh, we as faculty participate in those, but they drive those. And then from the school's perspective, you know, we create sets of activities that start on your first day with orientation, um, speaker series and workshops that are available to students uh, throughout the course of the program. Um, and then things like job fairs, uh, and career planning events are organized by our Career Development Center. So each of the programs has a dedicated advisor, which is important. I think that's relatively unique. Allows them to develop expertise in the areas that they're advising in, both from an academic as well as a professional perspective. Um, and then during your course of, of work here, if let's say you're somebody coming in because you're developing skills, staying with you within your existing employer, a lot of the activities will be focused on giving you access to a breadth of different experiences that an MBA, MSBA, master's in finance would, um, would offer you, that you can avail yourself to an array of business types of events. And then if you're a person coming in and you're thinking about a job change, an employer change, that's where the Career Development Center also has strong relationships with a range of employers. We 
We do things like field trips to employers. We engage them in our capstones. They're on campus if they're, say, helping us um, run projects or doing workshops, um, as well as interacting with students. So an array of different job uh, fair and student types of activities that link together local employers and companies with you. Here's another. Um, in terms of the flex schedule versus the MBA full time, um, do you think the flex and the full time are any different? Or would you say um, if people were deciding one or the other, maybe you can kind of differentiate a tiny bit, or if there is, or faculty, if it's the same? Um, well, okay. So the, the overall faculty is the same. Um, the learning experience is more is different because the full time is intensive. It's you're you're dedicated to us. You're here, and within the, the you know the period of time with the program, you're going to be and we're going to make sure that you're focused on um, on us as well. The curriculum is advanced. Um, it's a great preparation for your future. So if you invest the time, um, you will get a lot out of it, and it happens quickly. Um, flex, obviously, by, by definition, is um, for people that would like a little bit more flexibility in scheduling. Um, they're working or for whatever reasons, they're, you know, they, they see evenings and weekends as a better approach for scheduling. Um, electives may differ somewhat, but we're looking for a comparable experience for, um, for both cohorts. So if you're looking to choose between the two, I think, um, first of all, it's your lifestyle, where you are and what else you're doing in your life right now, probably the most important thing. Um, a secondary might be your learning style. So if you're a person who absorbs a lot of information and, and synthesizes it um, pretty quickly and efficiently, then a full-time program um, is, is definitely for you. If you're a person that likes to spend more time with content um, and really learn it and absorb it over a longer period of time, the flex is a great way to do that. So it really depends on, on kind of who you are and how you approach it. But I think first of all, about your life situation and how it fits within your time availability. Okay, thank you. All right, well, why don't we, um, Nancy, if you turn it back over to you, unless more questions come in, we can wrap it up. Um, I do want to make sure that you know that this is one opportunity to interact with us, but through Nancy, um, an absolutely fantastic resource, will answer your, your questions. Um, if you like data, uh, you know, if you like working with data and you like addressing, you know, business challenges, this is a great place to, you know, to pursue that, that journey. And if you look at our curriculum, online, you look at what's entailed, you'll see a very solid foundation with an array of electives and um, learning opportunities that focus on specific business areas of interest. And um, I would say, so for me, from my background, coming from the commercial world back into the academic world, I've done both over the course of my career. Um, it's a great practical experience and way to build your business analytic skills. No, thank you. And I also want to just encourage anybody that is interested, any interested students to take a look at the um, website, the Rady website. We have events that, have, that are currently scheduled. We have some admissions, virtual drop-in sessions, as well as application tips for the Flex MSBA. Um, and then we also have a guest speaker coming up um, next week. So just with, with that, I wanna be able to kind of go over it's analytics and innovation in baseball. Um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that, Keith, before we wrap it up and then we can. Oh, yeah, that's a great, great one, Nancy. Um, so like, as we talked about, we, we try to bring in people that you can interact with in industry, you know, that are deep within analytics. So um, Sig Maydahl is the assistant general manager of the Baltimore Orioles. He's really considered one of the pioneers in the area of sabermetrics. So he was one of the ones early on. He, he's actually um, started out as a NASA project manager. And his story was, um, it was really into fantasy baseball and developed, you know, sets of ways of approaching, analyzing all that data. And, you know, baseball discovered it. They, they started hiring, you know, Billy Bean was one of the great guys in Moneyball that got this started. Sig was involved in, way back then. So regardless, join us for that. He's a great, great stories, great speaker. 
and you'll learn about analytics being applied in a really interesting uh, area. Thank you so much. And once again, I appreciate everybody attending. Um, and just if anybody has any questions about admissions, please reach out to me. My um, email is nbserrano at ucsd.edu. And um, thank you so much.